Hello there and welcome to this video from Paul in Perth. Today we're going to be looking at the rear brakes on both the 2.0 litre and 2.5 litre BL because we're going to find out are the calipers the same or are the calipers different. I know from uh, previous experience and I absolutely guarantee you the front calipers are different. The SP25 has bigger calipers. I don't know whether the rear calipers are um, the same or different and I'm about to find that out. For those of you that are watching my channel because of my journey with cancer, I want to draw your attention to Cancer Update 1. And in Cancer Update 1, I specifically say that I'm going to continue to do my car updates. And the reason I'm doing that is because they um, they bring me joy. So I'm not going to stop doing them because screw this cancer and screw it taking joy away from me. I'm going to keep doing the things that bring me joy. So I'd like to introduce you to this guy here. This is Tom. Just, just want to say hi, Tom. You know, how you going? Now, Tom and I met because Tom answered an ad that I've got on the internet um, for car parts. And Tom said to me, hi, Paul, I need a rear right brake caliper for a BL. And in his first message, he didn't say whether it was a two litre or a 2.5, but I indicated to him that I've actually got both versions here. So he's come around today to uh, get that caliper, but we've agreed that we're gonna turn it into a video because we're gonna answer the question, could he have put a two litre caliper on a 2.5 litre SP25? So let's uh, take a little cut here and we'll start doing the job and we'll work it out. So what we're going to do is um, Tom's pretty uh, understanding of how to do the job himself. So as a change, because most of the time on my channel, I do the um, deconstruction. In this case, uh, Tom is actually going to do the deconstruction. And if he knows how to do it without my instruction, you can just watch him. If he needs a little bit of help from me, then I'll give him that help along the way. OK, so I'll just reverse the camera, camera up and we'll get started. All right, Tom, so you're on camera now. So if you want to uh, talk us through the, the first step, which I believe you're going to do it by removing the little dust dust covers off the back of the, the, um, the slider pistons. That's right. So to get to the slider pistons, you need to remove these covers, which will reveal a 7mm hex head. OK, so that's it there. Just a flathead screwdriver comes yep. right off. You do you want to just, can you just hold those up for camera? Yep, for sure. Okay, so those are the little, the little dust covers that um, cover the little ends of the sliders, and that's what they look like. And as you can see, he got them off very easily with a little flathead. Okay, so now you've got a seven mil hex. Got a seven mil. Okay. Slot straight in. So he's now putting that in, inside to the end of the slider pin. Yeah, and then now I'm going to loosen that up. And by the way, just before you pull that out, mate, can you just, yeah, pull your tool out of the way, but leave the, now, can you see this here? So that is showing us that the slider pin, can you just pull that, pull the pin out? Oh, is it too late, is it? Okay. But you can see there, you can wiggle it. So he has, boom, there you go. Okay, so there it is, half in, half out. So you can see that he has removed the pin. So there the pin is. And if you show us end on, so we can see the seven mil hex part, there's the seven mil hex part. So that is what a slider pin looks like. And now Tom needs to remove the lower pin. So Tom needs to remove that one there. So same again, seven mil hex. Yeah, now this one being the second one, now that he's removed that, that whole central carrier, so there we go, so that's out. That whole central carrier can now, um, be, oh, you need to, oh, you're quite right. Well done. All right, yeah. you've called me on it. Now, can you get that off with that flathead screwdriver? If you, if you can't, I, I can get, I can get you a longer screwdriver if you need it. That, you are using the right tool for it. Um, well, sorry, a longer version of that would be the right tool. If not, oh, no, you've got it. Yeah, if you keep doing that, you've got it. There you go. Okay, so you've now got the retaining uh, wire off. So that's now off, so you can pop that down on the floor. And if I'm remembering this job correctly, that whole carrier, you can now wiggle it out, can't you? Oh, do you know what I've done? I've left the handbrake on. If you just open the driver's door and just be careful when you do it that the car doesn't slide backwards. So can just let that, uh, yeah, please put it in park and then let the handbrake off. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hang on, pull the handbrake back on and then put it, put it up, pull it on and now let it off. Go on and go off. 
Okay, what I've just shown, uh, just for your information, Tom, is I've shown the um, cable actuating. Yeah, great. So I've just shown them that this cable went in and out when you did that. Okay. So now that the handbrake is off, that means the pressure off the pads is now relieved and Tom can now wiggle that whole central carrier off. So you can see him wiggling it left and right and he's getting it to come further away from the um, rotor every time he does that. And eventually the whole thing will pop off. Keep going, mate, you're doing a great job. I'll tell you what, yeah, use that up the top to lever. It's a bit stuck. Yeah, they've been on, they've, they've got a bit of rain on them. So just, just wiggle that quite forcefully. There you go. Okay, so that is now off. So if you just hold the brake pads up. So there's the brake pads. Um, looking at the wear on those, those pads are maybe 70% new. You, you, you'd get another probably 50, oh, I don't know, 40,000 Ks out of those. Um, so it's a shame they're probably gonna go in the bin, but um, that's, that's life. I say, if you pop those down on the ground. So the central carrier part, so Tom can now um, rest that over to the, to the side, to, to his right, and um, that'll get it out of the way. And that'll give Tom access to these two, um, four, that's it, perfect, well done, mate. You, should, you could do this for a living. Those, those two bolts there are 14 mil. So um, Tom's gonna pop on a long 14. And the reason he's gonna use a long 14 is that these bolts are put on, as we say, VFT, which is very effing tight. So you need a long throw um, spanner in order to get that initial crack. If you were to try and do it with a, um, a short throw spanner, you probably would, would have trouble because you simply wouldn't be strong enough. So he's got one of those bolts out there. So that's uh, one of the 14 mils and he'll need to do the lower one now. And when he gets the lower one on, off, then the caliper frame will will be um, able to be removed. Give it some juice, mate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that's why you need a long throw spanner is because if you tried to do that with a short throw spanner, even a strong bloke like Tom wouldn't have enough strength um, to, to get that loose because they are put on VFT. Okay, so there's the carrier arm, so that or the frame, I should say. That's the, that's the brake caliper frame, and uh, Tom has successfully got that off. The next job Tom has to do is a bit of a fun one because it involves bashing things with hammers, and who doesn't love that? So if Tom grabs that um, copper hammer from me and uses the copper end, if Tom taps that, if you can tap it, tap it from the front, but I shall I'll, look. I'll yeah, that's it. You actually need to tap in the back here. If you, if Tom taps that and slowly rotates the oh, he's got it, okay. Had he not been able to get that in one hit like that, he could have slightly rotated it a quarter, a quarter turn, tapped it again, gone another quarter turn and gone again. So that's the rotor there. Um, that is what the brake pads grab onto. So these pads, these pads sit on either side of the rotor. And when you put your foot on the brake, you're pushing the pads onto the rotor that causes friction and that causes your car to slow down. So now with the rotor off and the uh, frame gone, if I'm, if I'm giving Tom this, um, the whole caliper, we need to remove this. Now, one of the first things Tom needs to do is remove the handbrake cable. And that needs, yeah, you can try it with a screwdriver. If not, I'll get you a vice grips. Uh, but we'll see how you go. It, the, the method Tom needs, oh, there we go. That is a great method. Okay, so what Tom has done, just to show you, he has pushed in on the spring, and by pushing in on the spring, that gave him enough, um, enough room or enough spare um, cable to push, to push it past this L shape, and Tom has now got that um, off, and if Tom now pulls here, he will find that that entire cable pulls through. So there you he, there he go, he has completely removed the handbrake cable at that point. And the only thing holding uh, this caliper on is the hydraulic brake line. Now, I don't believe I've got the right um, tool with me at the moment to get that off. He needs um, what's called a crow's, crow's foot spanner. So we'll take a break here and I'll go and get the right crow's foot spanner for him and we'll show you removing that. So we'll be back in a moment. 
Now, just to explain what's happened, I've not been able to find my crow's feet spanners. If you want to Google what a crow's foot spanner is, just hold the spanner like that. Can you just hold it like that? Okay, see how this spanner is open-ended, so it's square like that. A crow's foot is more like that. So it has more than just the flat edges. It actually, it actually re reaches around and gets more of a grip. I, don't, I can't find mine at the moment, so we're gonna use an open-ended spanner. I can confirm that the correct size spanner for this job is a, is a 14 mil. So Tom, if you just wanna carefully, and I don't want you to round it off, so if you just carefully get in and crack that, Yep, and what I've done is I've got this milk bottle here. So just in case any brake fluid comes out, I have actually already, as it turns out, I've already removed the ABS module out of this car. And that meant I had to drain the um, brake fluid, but that's not to say that there won't be a little bit left. So Tom needs to be ready that if it starts uh, leaking fluid out onto my driveway, I'd appreciate it if he put the milk bottle um, underneath it and, um, and captured that fluid. So Tom's now rotating the caliper to and leaving the, the brake line in place. You'll also notice Tom's done a really smart thing. He's holding it upright and of course gravity goes down and that means whatever fluid is in that line is going to be, um, mo for the vast majority, retained within the line rather than spewing out onto my driveway. So Tom's actually doing that with a really, really good method. And Tom has got it out without losing a single drop. Now. When that, now just hold that there. Hold oh, it. When you, when you lower that down, a little drop or two might come out. I have already bled them, but you may find. Okay, one drop. Okay, we got one drop, two drops. So there's a few drops. So what we'll do is we'll just fix it up so that um, the milk bottle container is there. Tom has now successfully removed that caliper. So now it's time for us to compare the 2.5 litre caliper with the two litre caliper. So Tom, if you want to grab the 2.5, uh, the two litre and compare it to the 2.5, are they, are they different? If, if it helps you any, we can either reconstruct the half deconstructed one or deconstruct the other one. So you're actually comparing same with same. Um, although the way you've got it at the moment is, is good because um, we, know, we know for a fact which one came out of the two litre. Um, I... They're both saying 30A, I'm not sure if that's a reference. But... Yeah, let's just clear the tools out of the way so that we get a really clear view for the viewers. Okay, so that's the um, 2.5 litre on the left and the 2 litre on the right, although the one on the right does have the central carrier um, in it and the one on the left does not. I cannot see a difference. Tom, do you want to like in real time, rotate both of them so that we can see them from all angles, left and right, and see whether there are any differences. Yep, so keep bringing it around. I'm not seeing any differences there at all. So you'll probably need, you'll break your wrists if you keep going, but if you just um, reposition your hands and keep rotating. Yep, and then go all the way over. All right, so one thing that you might think is different but actually isn't is that's the bleed nipple there with a cover on it and there's the bleed nipple there without a cover on it, but they are the same. It's just one of them has a cover on and the other doesn't. So they're the same. And if you keep rotating, I cannot pick a difference between them. Um, visually, the only thing that works now, okay, if there's a difference, it's going to be in this piston because uh, the piston is what does the hard work. So, can you just compare the diameter of the pistons? Do me a favor, just pop that wire out. Um, where the have I got it down here? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so just, just pop that wire out so we can get a really good look comp comparison of the pistons. Okay, so hold, oh, do you know, I, I can't, I can't pick a difference between those pistons at all. Um, and the, the size of the aperture of the, of the holes appears to be the same. Um, do me a favor, just pop that out, that um, 14 mil, 
and just just make sure that that actually fits on the 2.5 litre. If you need a long throw, oh no, actually I don't have, don't have one. What's the chocking of it? Yeah. Okay, you got it? All right. All right, so yeah, that's the same. Okay, look, my, my visual observation of these two is that there is no difference between the uh, two liter and the 2.5 liter. I've worked out one other test we can do, and that's if we go onto the Bendix um, brake pad site and just check whether the same brake pads are used on the two liter and the 2.5, that'll, that'll um, give us a bit more of a clue. So we'll take a break now and we're just going to go and check the Bendix um, brake pad website and we'll come back after we've done that. Okay, so we've just to come back, um, we've had a look online and we have uncovered that the Bendix brake pad is the same for the 2 litre petrol, 2.2 litre diesel, 2.5 litre petrol and the um, Sky Active and also the MPS. So that means the rear brake pads as are, are identical on every single um, sub-model of BL. And because the pad is the same, and because I can't make out any um, difference in the piston or the um, caliper itself, I'm gonna conclude that actually the rear brakes on um, the entire BL range are the same. It's only the front brakes that were updated for the SP25 and the MPS. And actually that makes, that makes a lot of sense because is it 70 or 80 percent of your braking is on the front um, wheels yeah. so it makes sense that if you're going to upgrade the brakes the front brakes is the place you want to do it and the rear brakes are really just there to help and to actu actuate your hand brakes so i hope you found this interesting i'll um i'll just reverse up and we'll uh we'll have a sign off so just to show everyone we have the two liter uh rear rotor and the 2.5 liter rear rotor um side by side there that is actually the 2.5 on the left and the two liter on the right they are absolutely identical without a doubt they are the same um, diameter and uh, and thickness so i can confirm no difference at all hey there so this is the end of the job so as far as we can tell they actually are the same uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to post a link to the um website where I found the compatibility list and um, and that'll help you but um, from our investigations they are the same so I hope you've enjoyed this this update and uh, cheers from Paul in Perth and cheers from Tom so cheers <laughs>